one, two. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's devotion. Even though we are back in the auditorium, we're not back here officially, but we're going to do devotions from here today. If you can hear the echoing in here, that's because there's nothing in here. We have no flooring in here. I'm going to have Dana do a wide shot and show you a little bit of what's going on in here. It um, is just a shambles in here. Um, all the carpeting's out. All the chairs are out. Um, everything is just, you know, kind of piled up right now. It's all going to be boxed up and put into the semi today. Uh, all the walls in here will be wiped down. All the uh, pictures will come off the walls. The curtains are coming down today. And uh, we're going to try to get this room all done today. And then um, hopefully by the end of the week we can start painting in here. And um, then we can start laying the new carpet and, and subfloor. And hopefully, maybe by... Uh, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday, we could be in this room for church. And that's what I'm, I'm leaning for right now. But uh, we got a little bit to pray about today. We need to take and pray for um, um, uh, Nick Marquez. He's going in tomorrow for uh, knee replacement. And uh, we need to pray for him and uh, that uh, everything will go well there. And we need to just pray for each other that we can um, uh, get through this. We need to pray for the restoration project. We need to pray for uh, an awful lot of things going on uh, around here, the food bank and other things. And uh, we just have a whole lot of things that are happening right now. And just pray for uh, the ones working here that they'll be safe. And uh, so let's go, Lord, in prayer, and then we'll get started. Father, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for this devotional time that we have. We just pray now that you'll take and be with us, guide us, and direct us. Help us to get something out of this devotional today that we can use in our own lives. We love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. We just pray now that you'll guide and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you've got your Bibles, turn your Bibles to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 14. And we're only going to be looking at one verse. I guess it's 2 Chronicles chapter 7, not 14. It's verse 14. But it's uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. It says, if my people, which are called by na my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, uh, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You know, there's an awful lot in this verse. This is verse is a conditional verse. It's something that uh, there's a condition on it. You know, a lot of times in the Bible, there are two different things. There are conditional and unconditional promises of God. Now, this is a conditional promise of God. He's saying, if you do this, I'll do this. And I want to look at this a little bit. And uh, uh, the title of today's um, um, devotional is to, uh, A Two-Way Street. And when we need to realize in a two-way street, that means you've got cars coming in both directions, one coming and one going. And that's basically what this verse is is a two-way street. God says, if you do this, I'll do this. And let's take a look here at what God tells us in this verse. The first thing he says is if. Now, if you take and you see the word if anywhere, you'll think, okay, there's going to be a condition here that needs to be accomplished. And uh, he says, if. And uh, uh, then he goes on to say, my people. If my people. Now, what we need to realize is who is God's people? God's people is everyone, isn't it? You know, God made man in his own image. And after his image, he made both male and female. What we need to realize is this, is that God made everybody. And God loves everybody. However, this is not exactly what this verse is talking about. Because what we need to do is we need to look a little bit farther. And it says, if my people who are called by my name. You know, who are the people that are called by God's name? You know, we have all kinds of people that God loves. God loves everybody. But there are certain people who are called by his name. And those are the ones who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Those are the ones that know for sure, beyond a shadow of doubt, if they were to die today, they'd be absent from this body and present with the Lord. And we need to realize that even though 
God says, if my people, that's everybody, who are called by my name, the ones that have accepted me as their Savior, I am going to take and uh, uh, show you what I want them to do. Now, this is not for all men. This is only for those who are called by his name. But look what it says. It says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. What does it mean to be humble? What does it mean to humble yourself before God? That means to get down on your knees and you need to just pray and ask God for the things that you need. Yesterday in church, uh, yesterday morning, we were talking about David and David's great sin and how that he humbled himself and he admitted and repented of the sin that he had committed before an almighty God. And that's what we need to do. We need to get down on our knees and humbly come before God. You know, many times in the Old Testament, in the old times, when they would come into the presence of a king or a queen, they would get down on their knees and they would bow. Why? What are they doing? They were humbling themselves before royalty. And that's what we need to do with God. We need to get down on our knees and we need to take and humble ourselves before him. But it says, if we humble ourselves and pray. What we need to do is we need to realize that we need to get down and we need to pray. You know, there's so many things going on today, and it seems like we don't have enough time to pray. But you know what? You can make time for anything that you want to do. If you want to go to Walmart, hey, you just find the time to go there. If you want to go to the lake, hey, you find time to go there. If you want to go here or there, you just find time to go there. Well, if you want to pray, you have to find time to do that. You know, every day I have to find time by myself to get down and I need to pray and humble myself before an almighty God. Not only that, but he goes on to say, um, if we humble ourselves and pray and seek my face. What does it mean to seek God's face? That means to pray earnestly and to have him hear what we're trying to get him to understand. That's seeking his face. You know, when, when David, if you go into Psalms 51, and you read Psalms 51, and that was his repentance to God for the sin that he committed with Bathsheba. And you read through that, and you can see how he was trying to seek God's face. And he was pleading with God to forgive him of what he had done wrong. And that's what this is talking about. That's how we seek God's face, by earnestly praying before him and turn from our wicked ways. Well, what are our wicked ways? Oh, I live a good life. I go to church on Easter and Christmas. I, uh, I give um, you know, a little bit of money to church here and there. But listen, that's not turning from our wicked ways. What are our wicked ways? Our wicked ways are doing things contrary to God's word. You know, the thou shalt nots. You know, how many of us can go through the Ten Commandments and say, well, you know what, I keep them all the time. I can't. I break them all the time. I mean, there's something that I will break all the time. There are laws that God has put in that even I as a preacher will break. Why? Because I'm human. Because I'm human. And so are you. You're human. You're going to break God's laws. But we need to realize that we need to turn from our wicked ways. Once we acknowledge that the things that we're doing is wrong, we need to turn from them and don't go back to them. Don't go back to them. You know, I was talking to a man one day and he says, well, he says, I've tried to, sm I've tried to quit smoking about 15 times. But he says, I have to go back to it every time. Well, that's not turning from your wicked ways. That's acknowledging you have wicked ways, but it's not turning from your wicked ways. We need to turn and not go back to our wicked ways. Then he goes on to say, our wicked ways, <clears throat> and turn uh, from your wicked ways, then. Now, you notice that word then? Now, this is where the con conditional part comes with this verse. God says, if you do this, then, then I, 
What we need to realize is that this condition is based on what we do. Not what God's going to do, but what we do. You know, we need to humble ourselves. We need to pray. We need to turn and uh, seek God's face. We need to turn from our wicked ways. Then, let's look at the rest of that verse. Then, it says, will I hear from heaven. Wow. Think about that for a minute. You know, when I was younger, I always used to think God heard every one of my prayers. I used to think, you know what? God hears every prayer that I pray to him. But you know, as I got older, I found out that that's not the case. That that's not the case. It's only when I humble myself before an almighty God and I pray to him earnestly and seek his face, then does he hear from heaven. Then does he hear my prayer. Then will he understand what I am praying for and about. He says, then will I hear your prayers. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. You know, God knows what we're going to do before we do it. However, he still wants us to come to him in prayer. Yesterday when I was preaching about David, and, and as I was doing this devotional last night, I thought about David a lot. I thought, you know what? God knew that David was going to come and ask him for repentance. God knew that David was going to take and uh, come to him and repent and ask for forgiveness of the sin that he committed with Bathsheba. He knew that before David ever prayed. But he wanted David to pray and ask for forgiveness anyway. Nathan said to him, he says, the Lord has pardoned you or he has forgiven your sin and you will not die. David hadn't even prayed yet. David hadn't even asked for forgiveness yet. But yet God heard his prayers and he did not die. Then the last part of that verse, it says, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. What we need to realize is this. We need to realize that God will forgive our sins if we ask. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What we need to realize is this, is we need to ask for forgiveness, and he will forgive our sins. And then he goes on to say that he would heal our land. You know, our country right now is in a, a terrible, terrible, terrible shape. All of the riots and the picketing and everything that's going on all over the United States is terrible. We need God to heal our land. We need God to take and intervene in what's going on. However, we need to remember what this verse says. It's a conditional verse. And we first have to do our part before God will do his part. It's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. If we do this, God will do this. But we have to do this before God will do this. And we need to understand that. We need to understand that we have to do our part, and then God will do his part. If we want our land healed, we need to humble ourselves. We need to seek his face. We need to pray, and we need to take and ask God for forgiveness. And we have to tell him what we're going to ask him for. And if we do that, then, then he will hear from heaven, and he will heal our land. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you for this devotional. I pray that we might get something out of it. We just pray, Lord, that you be with us today. Guide us and direct us in all that we do. Be with us now, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Same time, same place, 8 o'clock. Tune in on Facebook. We'll see you later. Adios.